It is back. It is baseball time here in the beautiful city and the outlying boroughs and suburbs. It is time for the Yankees. It is time for the Mets, Tiki. Yeah, it is. It is time for wins. And we'll get to the Mets in a second as they send down their young prospects to minor leagues. But the interest, the biggest interest, the most interesting story this weekend was Anthony Volpe uh, getting um, uh, winning the starting job, as we just heard Recco say, Jerry say in the in the update. And it's exciting. It really is. It makes you feel like this is what we've been waiting for for a couple of years for him to ascend to this point. And let's be honest, he made it easy for him. It wasn't really even a competition, even though Oswald Pereira, uh, Peraza had a great last year uh, filling in at shortstop. And, you know, he, he probably has a future, maybe somewhere else. I'm sorry to, I mean, to think to see him uh, usurping Anthony Volpe at this point, but there's excitement because Volpe is finally here. This, this, Highly taught, uh, uh, sought after, and talked about prospect is finally in the major leagues. But it's masking a serious issue with the New York Yankees. And it's hard not to get excited. Opening day is four days away. We're going to be out there at the Hard yep. Rock. It's going to be awesome. And Volpe's going to be the start and shortstop, and it's going to be amazing. But there is a serious issue and a serious concern that you can't ignore with the Yankees, and that's their starting rotation, BT. We saw Luis Severino have an an oblique injury that's going to keep him out for a couple of weeks. I don't know how serious it is, and it's not the shoulder. It's not some reconstruction. It's not any of those things that are really damning, but it's kind of always the same with Luis Severino. Uh, you throw in the fact that uh, that that Montas is out, that Carlos Rodon, even though they said he could pitch if he had to, he's going to be out for a month. The Yankees essentially have had one healthy pitcher all spring training, and that's Garrett Cole. Everybody else has been banged up. Yeah. And, and now you're going to be stuck, not stuck, but whatever, you're going to be forced to throw uh, uh, Herman in the starting lineup. Clark Schmidt's going to have to be in the starting lineup. Nestor is probably going to get pushed back because he's a little bit behind everybody else, even though he's going to have to be the second or third starter. I mean, this is this is a serious concern for the for the Yankees. That's kind of dampening the Anthony right, Volpe right, right, right. I've, I've heard enough me. of this. Enough of this nonsense. I've I've heard enough. I mean, it's ten oh four and twenty nine seconds, yes. and the Yankees just did what many people were. Terrified that they would not do. Yeah, but you knew they were going to do oh, it. Well, I did, but not everybody else did. And that is the elevation of one of the best prospects that I've ever seen. I mean, the thing about Volpe, honestly, the thing about Volpe that's so incredible is that he can go 0 for 4 and still impact the game. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly pumped about that. Congrats to the, the entire family. Let's get this out of the way. Congrats to the entire family, you know. Uh, his support staff, his travel teams, his club teams. There was a great story over the weekend in the post how he basically willed himself onto the on Team USA, and then he became the third hitter. Like they didn't know if he was going to make it, and then the coach is saying we can't play or win without him. He's just that. He's that guy. Uh, so the the excitement level for me is just beyond um, measurable. It's through the roof. Now I know what you're saying about the Yankees rotation, but I think that you could go through. Just about every team in baseball mm-hmm. and and cherry pick things. Now, starting rotation is a little different than maybe not having a good seventh hitter. I get it. You can't <laughs> win without without quality pitching. I'm with you. But at the end of the day, as we get ready for the start of the Yankee season, they've got arguably the best player in baseball in Aaron Judge. Agreed. They've got arguably the best prospect in all the baseball in the middle of the diamond in Volpe. And they've got arguably one of the top aces. Actually, I think that's inarguable at this point with with Garrett Cole. One of the top, not the best, but one of the top aces in baseball. And oh yeah, by the way, they've got an incredibly, um, they got a good manager. I know that Aaron Boone's always taking the shrapnel here, but (laughs) what Aaron Boone, this is why Aaron Boone's perfect for the Yankees. I'm not saying he's Tony La Russa in terms of being a strategist. The way the game's constructed now, managers don't have that latitude anyway. It's all kind of predetermined, blah, blah, blah. But he's a great stabilizer. He's a great emotional influence on a team. When things go awry, whether it's Joey Gallo whiffing every time a year ago, or you can take this to the bank, Aaron Hicks stinking up the joint whenever he plays, and he's going to play a little bit early for some stupid reason. Whenever something happens, injuries, Aaron Boone might be among the two or three best 
stabilizing forces in baseball. Yeah, he never gets high, never gets he's just always the same. And the guys believe in him. And for, you know, a season that's one that is 162, that cannot be overlooked. Sometimes we do because when the Yankees lose to the Astros or look inept and barely squeezing by the Guardians, we get on Cashman, rightfully so with certain things, no doubt. We get on Boone, fair, certain things, no doubt. But I think when you look at the main components of the team, not to mention, you know, lefty hitting first base was going to hit bombs. The second baseman was got pop. I mean, LeMay, the Yanks are going to be fine. And the Yankees at this point uh, are no different than any other team desperately trying to get them last game today out of spring training, start the season, and start the race. Yeah. No. I don't, I don't, I'm, but, well, I'm not that worried. I agree. I mean, I really. I don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with anything you said because you're talking about the position players. You're talking about Glaber Torres, who, by the way, you didn't mention him. He had a great spring. He did have a good he spring. He be fantastic. Good. Now, maybe he ends up being trade bait at some point, but yeah. whatever. He had a great spring. I'm trusting Glaber Torres to be the starting second baseman uh, for the New York Yankees. Aaron Judge is going to be a stud. Giancarlo Stanton, let's hope he stays healthy, and if he does, he's going to be amazing. Rizzo is Rizzo. Josh Donaldson, let's hope he hits, you know, what, Volpe, you talk about you know, Trevino at, at catcher, all these things. Like, you you know what you're getting when the Yankees are at the plate. But this, as excited as I am, just like you are, BT, for Anthony Volpe to be announced in that starting lineup, we're going to be at the game with, uh, with, with our lucky winner who we talked to yeah. last week. It's going to be a fun afternoon out in out in the Bronx, one a.m. first pitch. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be sunny. It's Let's gonna, go or partly sunny, whatever oh, however you want to put it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Yep, and, and it's going to be awesome. I have a beer in my hand. I'm going to be. It's going to be awesome. That's right. A little pinch drive pills to bring know, a couple. And you know why it's going to be doubly awesome? Because Volpe's going yard, and the Yankees win with a walk well, off. That's why. But Garrett Cole's going to be on the mound. <laughs> now, if I was going on Saturday, it's <laughs> <laughs> a little different. <laughs> a little Sunday, it might be. A little bit different, yeah. and I can't ignore it. Right, I just can't ignore the the real issues that are that not. I'm not going to say play because that means it's already happened and it's and it's bad and it feels negative and it's a, just a downer. Yeah, but could potentially plague this team. You can't help but think about it after opening day is done. So we get to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of next week, and you're past saying, the pageant train, yeah, you're actually exactly. into the past rigors the of the season. Unless, of course, Volpe is going yard every night, and Judge is following it up, and Rizzo's doing the same. And Which they the, kind I mean, of expect those guys to do well. The The Yankees pitching situation is troubling, and and it's only it really hit me over the weekend because I you get that alert. You know, I have the Yankee alerts, the Met alerts, all, all the local team alerts. As soon as something happens, popped up on my phone, you know, breaking, whatever. Yeah. Louis Severino dealing with, it's just, it, it, it was a, really? Yeah, no, me too. And I'm going to give you that. And it wasn't, it wasn't terminal, just like, um, just like Rodon. It's not terminal. It's not like, oh, he's out for the season. We're screwed. It was, oh, here we go again. Like, yeah, yeah. Of, of all the things that could happen, yeah. this has to happen right now. And it just pulls you down. Just a tick. It pulls you down. Again, I'm still excited about opening day. And I'm excited about Volpe because it's been awesome. We've been talking about it. Feels like for years now, uh, even on the national show, we were talking yeah, about it. Yeah, he came up a few times, right? About Anthony he Volpe. Did. Um, I'm excited for it, but there's a reality with this Yankees rotation that's a little bit scary and unsettling. 877 337 6666. Tiki and Tier to Hero the Fan. It's just great to have baseball back in. Hopefully you guys had an awesome week, and I know everybody's jacked up. We'll get some, hey, by, by the way, let's just say, Darren Ruff, goodbye. <laughs> so I know Met fans needed to see that and hear that. Ruff is gone. Oh, he was awful. Uh, who's the right-handed DH? Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. It should be uh, one of the kids they sent down. Uh, we're inside of our Town Fair Tire studio. Our friends at Town Fair remind you that you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Listen, I do want to, to point this out. I, I, we should have learned a lesson a year ago because think, go back. I'm not saying I didn't hammer him. I did, but think about like the, the, the apex of our emotional instabilities and frustrations with Joey Gallo, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was, it was crazy. Every I mean, day. we, we, I, we were crushing the guy. It was every day. And rightfully so. <laughs> and finally I got to a point. I said, you know what, guys, we got to stop screaming at this because He's not going to be here, and if he is, he's not playing when it matters. So I, I, I think, and, and fundamentally, I get you. I know what you're saying. They've started seasons with better rotations than this for sure. But at least let me alleviate a little fear in this regard. The Yankees, and this applies to Hicks as well, will not be rolling out guys who are nightly detriments to what they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So Gallo eventually was sent packing. 
if Hicks is still Hicks, he'll be sent back in, and the Yankees will eventually acquire arms. Now, the problem with that is when Brian Cashman acquires arms, they're usually hurt. And if they're not hurt, they usually underperform like somebody like Sonny Gray when he comes here and doesn't necessarily fit on the New York stage. It's an imperfect team, but so is all the baseball. Let's go. I'm ready. Yeah, I mean, everybody should be ready. It's baseball. This guy's here trying to drop York. negativity it's the first negativity. two minutes of the show. It's just the reality. opening day's Thursday. Dude. Volpe gets called up. The most highly touted prospect in my lifetime, what, honestly, is a Yankee. What, and you're throwing water what, on this. What, what are you doing? I, I'm not throwing water on Volpe. I'll never throw shade on Volpe. He had an unbelievable spring, and he earned it. And I, it's funny because I'm listening to uh, the, the, the clip that the Yankees put out where Boone is, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, trying to keep it, you know, flat on them, you know, oh, you need, need some more, you know, bats at double, at triple A, you know, he only, whatever, how many bats? 20 21 at bats, 20, 20, 21 20, bats 20, at 22 games, I think. He's like, he's just throwing the shade up there just to make him feel a certain way, but yep. whatever. And I'm listening to him, I'm like, who cares? Forget triple A, just say, kid, you earned it. Now you got to take him on the ride, no, you got to put don't. it out for social no, media, you, you got to toy with the no, kid, he's still a rookie, you man. Walk, you walk him into the room and said, kid. You're a hell of a baseball player. I can't wait to have you on 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 uh, on the on the diamond every single afternoon. I mean, I hear you. I hear you. Sometimes you want to play with them for social media, but the fact that it's you know broadcast that way, just tell the kid that he what we all knew. Like we all knew why he was there. We all knew that he was going to be the starting shortstop for for the New York Yankees, and they did a little showmanship around it. But I mean, you keep saying we all knew, but not everybody had faith that the Yankees would do this. What do you mean we all knew? We all knew that he should be. I mean, when once I don't you, think everybody thought that. Aaron, I mean, I thought that he would be, but not everybody did. Once Aaron Judge is talking about it, once yeah, but he took a pass a little bit this weekend. He was asked about it again. Yeah, I know, but and it was a, I was surprised. Maybe he, knew, maybe he knew and didn't want to tip his hand. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what? That's possible. So that Garrett, actually Garrett, is possible. Garrett Cole. He talked about like it's, once you got the Lemay, he was gassing yeah, him up a couple once days you a week had ago. Some of the some of the vets, yeah, talking about it. You knew it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. You knew that they had gotten a little bit of an inkling that Volpe was going to be the guy. And it was it's awesome, man. It's just, it's exciting as hell for him. It's exciting for his family. It's exciting for the Yankees family because they think they they have the next and maybe even better Derek Jeter. Right, so we'll certainly s- a different type of profile yeah. in terms of athletic traits. So He's got we'll a lot see. more pop, that's we'll for see. sure. But game three and four, that's what I'm worried about yeah. with this Yankees team. It's crazy too. You mentioned Jeets, and when Jeets is coming up, obviously no social media at this point. And you know, I look back, my old time favorite Yankee, you know this, Mattingly, of course. But even Mattingly, who came from high school, didn't go to college, almost did. We almost played basketball in college too, Donnie. Uh, but Mattingly's ascension. If you didn't get Baseball America, you, you didn't know what the hell was going on. You didn't know what he was doing. Could have been hitting 210 for all we knew, right? And then, but even when he started to cut through, he was an outfielder. Uh, it took really, you know, Lou Pinella to 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 have faith that he could pull the ball because he was an opposite field kid. Not many, not many, not many home runs in the minors. So nobody saw Mattingly's ascension. It just he was here, and then he won the batting title, then he won the MVP, then he should have won it again in '86 with Jeter. And he made 53 errors at Greensboro. There was no, there was no social media then either. You knew that he eventually he, he had a, he had some some real some real characteristics that would um, that would transfer to the big league level. But of all the Yankee prospects ever, Volpe's the one that we documented on a daily basis. Look at Volpe stealing second. Look at Volpe stealing third. Look at Volpe getting a, a ricochet off of Severino's ass and throwing a you know off one foot a bullet over the, the dot across the diamond. Look at Volpe, uh, Volpe going yard to straightaway center. Look at Volpe crushing an oppo bomb to right. Look at Volpe ripping a missile to left field on a one-two slider. Like, we saw every single step this spring. Yeah. And if he didn't make the team... We were revolting. It also goes back into last year. I remember last year you're talking. <laughs> how many bases has he stolen? He got forty stolen bases, right? So no, you had fifty. Yeah, fifty. Fifty in totality. Yep, forty. I think we're in double A. Yeah, I think you're right. It was like, forty six and six or forty six like and seven. That. But but my point is, you almost need to give him a more credit than those guys because those guys toiled away. I'm talking about the Jeets and the Downing baseballs and all those guys. Yep, they toiled away in anonymity in a sense. Whereas Volpe was front and center. He was everything that he did, and it didn't crush him. Yeah. Sometimes that crushes you when <laughs> when you have a huge expectation and every step of it is documented. So Volpe goes over three, over over six over his last two, two games or whatever it is. 
Oh, Volpe's not the guy. Mm. Oh, he's he's not he's not ready. You would get some of that too. So, right, there would get some that. people would say that. And despite that, he sh- he shines through and he ends up making the opening day roster and is going to be the starting shortstop for the Yankees, which is awesome. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't mask the big issue that's facing this rotation. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. And every time they stick a microphone to the kid's face, you just say, "Man." What a family. Mm-hmm. You can just tell he is just a good kid. What an awesome story. All right, let's get to you. Maybe we can uh, wrangle a little positivity out of Tiki today. It was, uh, <laughs> woke up on the wrong side of the baseball bed. No, Saturday I woke teasing. up on the wrong side. Oh, by I... the way, real quick, how was the weekend doing the hair and uh, doing the makeup and doing everything that you had well, to do she did great. for your one daughter? She did great. Tegan did great in her dance competition, so I got it done. That's all that and matters. And I passed off the buck to like the other moms. Oh, you did? <laughs> I did. Hey, listen, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Anthony's in Jersey City. What's happening, Ann? How you doing today, bud? Guys, I am great. We are going to be watching opening day. But Volpe <laughs> playing short. I am, ecstatic. I am ecstatic. I think I called you guys twice last week because I wasn't confident one bit with the organization starting him opening day. I got to say, it's easy for us when it goes wrong, whether it's Donaldson, Hicks, IKF, to go at Hal, to go at Cash. But they made two moves this offseason, and that's paying up Judge, and that's putting Volpe where he belongs. So I applaud them, and finally, thank you for doing what is right, because there's no way they could have justified this kid, you know, starting the year in AAA. And it's just the one thing, people act like, you know, Peraza was someone that was out of options, and there's no way you can send him down. You know, they did a lot of us. It was strictly a competition and Volpe beat him for the job, and I'm happy it went that way. You know what it does, Ann? Thanks for the call there, buddy. It bolsters, or maybe in some cases, restores your faith that the Yankees are evolving mm-hmm. and that the Yankees understand that there's not – like that maybe the way they used to do business is, is a little antiquated. Well, I think it also – And they're adjusting. I think it doesn't feel like we're in an era of all sports, baseball, football, basketball, where – basketball not so much – because that's more money, but it's it's merit matters. We talked about this with the Giants all season, all season long, last off off season and season. Okay, you have to earn it. You have to earn the right to play, and it became a big talking point for them. And that's why I think they their culture is the way that it is. I feel like the Yankees last year the talking point was it wasn't on merit. It was more on reputation or contract status. structure status yeah, or, yeah. What, or what you're supposed to be, not actually what you're doing. That's fair. And this, and that's frustrating. It is oh. frustrating. And I think the Aaron judge thing, you know, the last year of his contract, playing it out with a lot of pressure going 62 home runs, he earned what they gave him I, I completely and utterly earned it. And now you get, the follow up to that in spring training of Anthony Volpe in a three way competition. It's not just it was not just him and Peraza. You know, IKF was there as well. It, he he earned the right to be the starting shortstop for the Yankees, and it just it feels like there's a just a slight turning of mo for the Yankees. Yeah. And I think that's I wonder awesome. if that's Brian Sabian. Brian Sabian's a voice. You know, I'm not, not saying that he's the one. I didn't even think about. You that. know what I mean? Like. They brought him in. He's been around a long time, but he's got – the thing about Sabian, who came for the Giants, obviously, many of you know that, he's more of um, an old-school gut guy. And when you marry that with the analytics, that's the perfect formula. And, again, evolution by the Yankees, yeah, we can crush them, and we have when they frustrate us, but you got to give it up. We, we knew it was the right thing, but for them to do that – that's a little bit of a step out of their character, and that is a good sign. 877-337-6666. Tiki and Tierney on the fan will come back. We'll get you Yankee calls. We'll obviously line up, line up the Met issues a little later as we get ready for the start of the 2023 baseball season right here on the fan. 